Hey everybody, Stu Smith here going live and taking some questions here after a quick little discussion. And you guys may want to ask some questions after this because this discussion is pretty good. It's about recruiting, military recruiting. Now, I don't know if you have noticed, if you haven't noticed, perhaps you're living under a rock, but recruitment numbers are low. So what does that mean? That means recruiters are going to work harder to get more people in. And how do they do that? They entice them with bonuses. Now, let me just start off by saying there should never be a reason to join the military because they give you a bonus. A bonus is a bonus. It is like an extra benefit to you wanting to serve your country, to better yourself with a skill or trade or get money for college. You know, all of those are great reasons to serve. To get a bonus is not a great reason to serve because that bonus would be gone in six months. <clears throat> so if you take a look at all the branches of service, recruiting numbers are lower. Not for any reason, really. Um, Maybe the war's over, people don't want to serve, but sometimes that gets more people wanting to serve because they're not going to war. Get both sides of the spectrum when you when you uh, join the military. Um, so, you know, it just depends. You know, sometimes when there's a really good economy, recruiting numbers are low. So, which is odd because this is one of those weird economies where unemployment is actually really low. If unemployment was high, recruiting numbers would be increased. So they wouldn't have to do uh, bonuses. So it's, it's a weird dynamic that's going on. But if you take a look at some of the uh, bonuses, I mean, the army alone, one of our guys just got a $50,000 bonus. Now he has to get through the training and you know, which is a sort of a big if, I mean, depending on, you know, what job you're doing, but there are many jobs in the Navy by position that are getting significant bonuses. And uh, if you go to Navy.com slash bonus, you will see it. Now, listen to this. This is really big because we, we had a guy back when I guess. They were offering bonuses to get through buds back in 2008 when they're trying to expand the, the teams. <clears throat> he got a $40,000 bonus when he finished buds. He finished buds, but he also got a $60,000 uh, loan, uh, not a loan, loan repayment. So he had $60,000 in college debt that the Navy wiped away. So in his first year, of being in the Navy, by the time he finished Buds, he had made an extra hundred thousand dollars. You know, basically. So there's that kind of stuff that's available right now. The Navy has a loan repayment plan for up to sixty-five thousand dollars for qualifying loans. That's pretty good. Um, air rescue swimmers getting twenty-four thousand. Crypto techs getting 15,000 uh, explosive EOD guys getting 18,000. So they need EOD guys. They need uh, corpsmen who are going into the, like the SART corpsmen, uh, advanced tech field, they call it, um, 18,000. Um, IS information systems for submarines, 15,000. Machinist mates, 10,000. Ooh, nuclear field, thirty-eight thousand. So you go nuke, you get a thirty-eight thousand dollar bonus. Now here's the deal, though. If you go nuke, chances are of you lateral transferring into something else outside of nuke, very slim. Like you're not going to be able to sign up nuke and then later on in your career go to buds. Those type of things are, I doubt they even happen. Um, you might find one or two instances, but very rarely will a rate, 
a job in the Navy let you go to do something else, especially after they gave you a bonus. The reason why they gave you a bonus is because they're undermanned. So if you're trying to maybe go do something else later, doing one of these ratings that is not the one that you want to the first place, that's something you need to consider because you getting out of this rate after being given a bonus is going to be very slim. Uh, Swick guys get a boat bonus, um, 18,000. So then there's all kinds of stuff for the reserves as well. In fact, if you're a former active duty and you want to go reserves, you'll get a $20,000 bonus just for going reserves. And that's in the Navy. Um, Air Force bonuses. Whew. Man, there's a whole bunch of Air Force bonuses going down. All through Spec War, even. Yeah, you got you got a lot. Air Force bonuses. I mean, very similar to the Navy. So, that's a good deal. Signing bonuses. Mm, good stuff. Um, now here's here's the flip side of this. They the army specifically has launched another program. I'm not sure if the other uh, branches of service have done this. Um, now they're rewarding recruiters for getting more recruits. So it used to be that you were just a recruiter. That was your job. You didn't get bonuses for doing your job. Now there's a recruitment production incentive, assignment incentive pay, where you get $150 for every qualified recruit that you get into the Army. Now, I think there's certain standards that that recruit has to hit, like uh, ASFAB scores and, and things like that. But... Um, they, they can do that up to 10 recruits a month. So they get a extra $1,500 a month. Um, there's, here's the good and bad of that. The good news is they're going to work harder to get you in. So that means they may be a little more proactive than maybe the normal recruiter of getting you in. The bad news is they're going to be more proactive to getting you in which means there may be some ethics issues that may occur that may turn a black and white issue into sort of gray. And what I mean by that is, let's say, um, you know, they're trying to fill a field that needs to be filled um, and they get a person that might be qualified in it, might not even be interested in that, and they talk them into going something else. You know, that could happen. Uh, you know, they could say, hey, just lie about your medical condition, lie about things like that. So there's not saying that happens frequently, but it happens. So when you go talk to a recruiter, make sure you thoroughly have gone through any website, the official website recruiting process, so you at least got those basics down, and then maybe go to some of the chat rooms around Reddit and things like that, asking questions like the you know on these type of forums, where people can fill in the blanks for you if you have some, um, and those may or may not be accurate, but. Uh, do your research. Otherwise, you're just leaving it in the hands of someone else that really sees you as $150. Right? So, like I said, it's good and bad, depending on, on the recruiting process. So, but, you know, if you need the money and you were planning on serving anyway, that's a nice bonus. Definitely a nice bonus. But there's been some great stories of guys um, definitely you know, making some extra money, 
serving like they wanted to, got college paid off, got their college, uh, you know, paid off through loans, or they got their college through the GI Bill. So many reasons why to serve. Had a great skill, came out. Next thing you know, they're making big money in the IT world. So he also had IT skills, you know, learned in the military. So there you go. With that, let's chat about other things. So I uh, I got some videos to show you guys today about the um, combat swimmer stroke, and we'll go over some of those. Uh, I downloaded four new ones today, so that I think that'll be plenty. Uh, I think that's about it. So. I will show those in a minute. Let's see if we have anything uh, here in the questions. Nope, just comments. Um, yep, it's not a million bucks, but it's pretty darn good. So let's do this. Let's, um, let me pull up a, a video here. Someone swimming. I may show you this one just because um, it's one of those samples of it's kind of hard to see. And really, if, if you can't see yourself swimming, you know, I can't either. So let's see here. All right, so let's back this up a little bit. When he kicks off the wall, it looks pretty good from here, but notice... See how his head is like coming out of the surface? That little bit of surface tension with your head right there really slows down your effectiveness off the wall and the distance you're going to be able to get off the wall with no effort. So you're just kind of swimming with the brakes on right there. You can see it create those little little waves here. So this right here, what I would call like a little bit difficult to see, mainly due to that glare. Uh, but you can see enough. So you got a top arm, bottom arm kick, one Mississippi, two Mississippi pull. Good timing. He does that in 23 seconds. Don't need to grab onto the wall like that. Just push off the wall. Especially uh, uh, that high, it's just really going to slow you down. But he's got a good, you know, one thing I also would like to see, too, if you send videos, is if you're going to change sides, change sides so I'm seeing you um, from the front. Like, see, see how you're swimming, looking away from me here? So that means you're on your left side. And then when you come back, you come back on your right side, and I can't see the front of you swimming. So... I can basically just see that you're getting the top arm, bottom arm kick timing down, but I really can't see if you're recovering tight, if uh, you got a decent kick. But I will say this, you can't argue with the results because you did that in 50 seconds. You can see the time here, 50 seconds. So that's a 50 second 50, not a lot of effort to do that. So I would count that as uh, pretty darn good. Just some minor critiquing that I would do is like, especially off the wall here, when you plow off the surface, try, try to be just a couple inches deeper. Not too deep, but just a couple inches. But yeah, this is pretty good. Doesn't look like you're adding extra flutter kicks or anything like that in there. But you see, see how the glare just like, really screws up what I can see. And you'll see, you know, compared to these other videos, you know, if you could maybe change angles, that might work a little smoother there. But maybe it's just the time of day that you're doing it. But anyway, it's a little bit difficult to see. So that's all right. Let me stop sharing here. I'll pull up the next one, but we'll talk about it in a minute. Let's see. No questions? Come on, folks. You guys got questions, send them. 
I'll move right into the next one since there are no questions. All right, so here we go. So he's one second in. All right, so kicks off the wall. Good streamline. Uh, you notice he didn't do the breaststroke pullout, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, he probably could have gotten a little bit longer off the wall, maybe another yard before he started the stroke. Now, I will say this. I do like to put – see how you have your both hands on top or one hand on top of the other? Here off the kickoff, biceps on your ears. That looks really good, but let's do it during the kicks too. Like during this glide phase, put one hand over the other every glide phase. Just going to make it that much more uh, streamlined for you. I think what this one here, does this must be a 50 meter pool maybe? Now I can't tell. That's just. No, it can't be that fast. So this is only a 29-second video. So it's got to be one length in a 25-meter pool. Um, not horrible, but definitely not fast. I think you could probably be a little faster with the kick. Once again, you know, I can't see you from the other side. That may show something with your recovery, though it doesn't look like it's too far out there. Kick looks good. Good scissor kick. Though I will say this. I think you may be rolling over in the middle of your kick versus kicking on your side and gliding slowly over to your belly. One Mississippi, two Mississippi pull. Yeah, you got good timing, and you're still moving throughout that whole thing. So this must be a meter pool because a 25-meter pool is about 27, almost 28 yards. So doing that in 28 seconds is not that bad, actually. So, oh, still no questions. Come on, folks. If you got questions, send them. That's what I'm here for. I'm going to show another uh, video. Uh, this one's not too bad either. This is one of our local guys who could not swim at all about a month ago. And he has gotten much better. All right. So kick off the wall. Now, one thing I would recommend here is he gave himself all of one second off the wall before he started pulling those double arms. So give yourself three, four seconds. Right. And if you're not gliding for three seconds, at least there's something wrong with your streamline or your power kick. I will say this, he does have the stroke down, top arm, bottom arm, kick, hold the glide. And he notice he stays on his side. He does not roll over to his belly. Now, I will say this, what do you guys notice here? Oh, sorry, you guys don't see this. Damn it. Let me share that again. You guys just saw my screen there. Sorry about that. I'll pull this up again. Make sure you guys see this this time. All right. Now, here we go. So, backtrack. Everything I said before, he needs to hold the hold the glide a little longer off the wall before he goes into this double arm pull. He needs to um, hold the glide a little longer per stroke. Uh, watch the count here. One Mississippi, two yeah, I couldn't even get Mississippi out number two. So he just needs to hold the glide a little longer. Another thing I like to do, too, with the guys that like to swim on their side is have them rotate just a little bit during the glide because if you notice, this top arm is just going to be plowing the surface pretty much the whole time, even during the glide phase right here. You know, his elbows scamming the surface, his shoulders scamming the surface skimming the surface so overall this is not bad it's just inefficient because he's not gliding long enough and it was 53 50 yeah a little under 53 seconds um so not horrible 
um, getting there. So, so I would give that a sub nine pace. He's right just under nine minute, 500 yard pace. If he could get in shape to do that for uh, nine more times, he'd be sub nine for sure, which is a good accomplishment. Um, Flavio says he's 5'10", 160. Do you suggest keep bulking and following the lift cycle or follow your cows and cardio? He'd also like to know if it is suggested to bulk while following your cows and cardio program. Well, <clears throat> here's the deal. It doesn't really matter what program you're on. Bulking is really dependent on how much you are eating. Okay, you can gain weight on a cows and cardio program. Seen people do it. Put on muscle, put on mass. I've seen them lose muscle and fat, you know, at the same time. Different people. So it really depends on your food intake more than anything else. I would suggest this. Regardless on if you continue to lift or you start working on your cows and cardio, what I would do is just eat more and put in some more cows. Because at 5'10", 160 is a little light if you're preparing for significant load-bearing activities, logs, boats, rucking, fireman carries, things like that. You need a little bit of mass, some strength, some you know stability, and some durability that strength training provides. But you also still need some muscle stamina and endurance. So what can happen you know, at the first time as you put on 10 or 15 pounds, let's say you get 5'10", 175, which is really good. I would say that'd be a good goal for you is you may find that your pull-ups are a little lower and you may find that your run's a little slower, mainly because you're now carrying around this extra 15 pounds. So you got to get in shape for that as well. So there's kind of a left and right side to this uh, wanting to gain weight. but the only answer in wanting to gain weight is if you want to be big, you have to eat big. Lifting will help it, absolutely, but so will more calories, even if you do cal calisthenics. Good question, though. Any comments on the head rotation during the CSS? I'm pretty much a plank in the water. Um, yeah, you definitely want to rotate, but you don't have to rotate your head. You rotate your body. So if you were if you had a neck brace on, you could still swim. You could still swim freestyle for matter. Because if as I'm if I'm pulling that arm, my whole body turns and my face is out of the water. I'm not turning 90 degrees. If I turn 90 degrees right now, I'd be looking up at the ceiling. A lot of people do that and they over rotate just by looking up at the ceiling. So you just need to turn 90 degrees. So if you're on your side, you're already 90 degrees. So if you're on your belly and you rotate over to your side, you're there. Face out of the water. No need to even turn your neck. So I think you'll you'll have an easier time swimming if you once you understand that. Let's see. Go on recon. YMCA won't allow swimming and treading in fatigues. Yeah, most pools don't. Any on suggestions on how to replicate that? Also, your five-minute swim, five-minute tread is gold. It is good. That's a good combo. Well, my recommendation is maybe have a friend who has a backyard pool. You can play around with that. You know, obviously, don't do it by yourself. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, we also have uh, the Chesapeake Bay where we go into water that's about six feet deep and we just tread water there with camis. And we also have, uh, you know, swimming in camis in very shallow water. So if you stood up, you could survive. So we, we, we're lucky we have this beach that runs about a half mile back and forth. And... Uh, 
it's literally three and a half, four feet deep. And you can swim in that and you get a cramp, you just stand up. You get tired, you just stand up. So if you have some safe areas to uh, swim in, consider that. Or find a pool that's a little cooler, which is kind of hard to do, to be honest with you. All right, so your son is working out, excelling, competitive. Oh, good. He said during the lifting, he had 21 reps. Other guys did 20. Nice. See, that's, I told you it would start happening, you know, especially once some testosterone gets flowing in these young boys. Um, the The urge to lift and compete increases significantly. I saw it in my own son. I saw it in me. You know, probably around 13 years old, I was like, I want to lift weights. My deep voice. <laughs> That's really good. Good job. Yeah, he's going to definitely be receptive to it now. And he's going to find other people to train with and be mentors in the weight room. I mean, I, you know, I, I learned how to, to do a lot of this from, you know, the, sheriff deputies and the powerlifting coaches that were also lifting in there and bodybuilders. Um, you know, it's, it's just a great way to grow up, you know, spending time in the weight room like clockwork. Cause you see the same people every day. And then once you start seeing the same people every day, you start talking to them and, you know, ease eases up. So, all right. Since the CRO test allows fins, would it be a good idea to focus on using elementary side stroke for the test and stay in streamline? Working on it, but I suck at strokes with face in the water. Uh, well, you get a mask, and I think you get a snorkel, too. Can you use a snorkel for that? If not, you, that's all right, too. But it's up to you. You can also do freestyle. Um, I think you just need to learn how to do freestyle better and be, get a little more confidence with that because you're going to need it in some of your training, like being able to swim with your face in the water. Because all you got to do is exhale when your face is in the water. And then when you turn to breathe, all you're doing is inhaling. So you're probably just having a timing issue with when your face is in the water. Make sure you're exhaling because what a lot of people will do is they'll hold their breath when their face is in the water and then they'll try to exhale and inhale when they turn their, turn their face to, to breathe or turn their body to breathe. So exhale underwater, turn and inhale in a sequence of swimming. Uh, let's see. Let's move the next one. Just applied to SOAS. My PST was 720, 100, 95, 20, 840. Excellent. What else should I incorporate into my training now that I've taken the PST? Well, here's the deal. You're going to take the PST again when you show up at SOAS. And with those numbers, chances are you will be a SOAS candidate. Um, they're very good. Um, prob I would put those in the top 10% for sure. Um, so work on the PST to get better scores, even than that, or at least the same. Okay. Cause that's going to matter to a degree. Then you're going to do a four mile run. You'll do a mile swim with fins. You'll do rucking, um, in sand. So get used to that. You'll do a lot of bear crawls and fireman carries. You'll have logs, you'll have boats. I think I know you have logs. I'm not sure about boats. Maybe you have some boats, um, but I mean, it's only five days, so it's not going to be, you know, it's going to be hard because it's going to be kind of like a hell week simulation. Uh, but you're the subjective or sorry, the objective grading points that you will have will be another PST four mile run one mile swim in the ocean 
or bay, open water. So learn how to swim straight. Rucking. And then a variety of tread, you know, some treading. You'll have to do that. So get good at treading. Things like that. So it's not quite like first phase, but in a way, in some ways it's harder than first phase. In some ways it's easier than first phase. And what I mean by that is uh, like they're not doing rucking right now in first phase. You will during SOAS. So, you know, they'll do a lot more logs and boats than you will, but you will get definite taste of all the logs and boats that you want. Um, and they do two mile swims in the ocean in first phase. You'll only do one. And you will do a four mile timed run, and so will they each week. So though that's my advice. Get better at the PST and uh, learn how to do some log PT simulations. In fact, one of our favorite workouts that we do is the Sand Baby Devil Murph, right? Sand Baby Devil Murph. So it looks like, in fact, I just wrote it up this weekend. Let me, uh, let me pull it up and I'll just cut and paste it into the uh, program here for you. Oh man, that's not it. So the Sand Baby Devil Murph is basically a combination of log PT simulations and um, man, I cannot find it. I gotta go back into a different section. Okay, here it is. So Sand Baby Devil Murph looks like this. Check this out. This is pretty fun. I'll put this into the comment section and you can add this usually once a week. Make it like a full body day after a maybe a run swim ruck day. In fact, that's how we have it. We have it as a we'll do a two mile run, a three mile ruck, followed by a, a 2000 meter swim on one day and some drown proofing. And then the next day we do this full body drill where it's pull up, push up, squats. Uh, with a little pyramid, one to five. This is just a warm up where you do like one pull up, one push up, one squat, jog 100 meters, two, 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 three, 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 stop at five. Just want you warmed up because then you're going to get this 50 pound sandbag and do push presses, sand baby lunges, and you don't set the sand baby down for these first four. So you got sand baby push press, sand baby chest carry lunges, sand baby chest carry sit ups, sand baby shoulder carry squats. Then you can set the sand baby down and you got pull-ups max, push-ups 50, bear crawl 100, fireman carry 100, farmer walks 100. And at the end of that long circuit, you do an 800 yard uh, or 800 meter run. So you'll go through that four times. And that is, and later on you can do a 30 minute swim or practice drown proof and drills that we did after mobility day. So that is the Sand Baby Devil Murph. That's a great workout. In fact, it's in, it's even in this one. A couple times. And it's in the spring one as well. Because it's one of those go-to workouts that is preparing people for as close as you can to log PT without doing log PT. So check that out. That's a good one. If an officer from Naval Academy does not make it through BUDS, what jobs do they get recycled into? Usually nine times out of 10, it is surface. Because all the other jobs are uh, taken. Just the way it is. Those jobs get filled that year and very rarely does someone who doesn't make it through BUDS go to pilot school, for instance, or EOD. Uh, I've heard some cases where guys have gone pilot, but that was one of those years where they needed pilots and they haven't filled their quotas with pilots. So it really depends on the needs of the Navy, but nine times out of 10, okay, 99 out of 100, that guy's going uh, surface. 
My swim is slow, but my CSS form is pretty decent. What would my holdup be? Uh, could be a variety of things. Could be streamline. Could be a weak kick or weak arm pull. Um, I need to see it so I can tell you. And me telling you how to swim verbally is not going to make you a better swimmer. So you need to also make a video of you swimming and just watch what I would deem as a perfect CSS. And where do you find that, you ask? You can go to my reels over at Instagram or you can go to TikTok where I have perfect CSS labeled in here a couple of different times. Got some excellent ones, got uh, perfect CSS. All right, so I'm going to share this one with you just because it's so darn perfect. I did this yesterday, but you really don't get a whole lot better than this from a non-swimming athlete. So notice the streamline off the wall. You see this? Yeah. Okay, good. So notice the streamline off the wall. Double arm pulls, got a really good breaststroke kick. He prefers breaststroke kick with this stroke, which is fine. You can do that. Um, I prefer a scissor kick, and it's a lot easier to transition into swimming with fins if you practice scissor kicks because you're going to have to do scissor kicks or flutter kicks with fins when you put it on. You can't do a breaststroke kick with fins effectively. I've seen people do it. It just doesn't work that well. You can do a dolphin kick, though. You could opt for that. But anyway, check out that. You'll see tons. I want you to compare your 50-meter CSS to any of these perfect, excellent swims, and you can tell me what you're doing wrong. But if you send it to me, I'll tell you what you're doing wrong if you're doing something wrong. So there you go. So, yeah, you guys got to check out that Sam Baby Devil Murph. It's just pure classic. I wish it would have come out normal, but it came out all jacked up. Yeah. Have you and your guys started cows and cardio yet? No. We're going to do that at the end of the month. So, for you guys who want to see... Uh, what that looks like. Let me share this with you. So you can see this. Let me see if I can bring it in a little closer. So this is just one of my workout weeks. Come on now, where'd you go? I'm not sure what happened. I think I made it too big. Screwed it up. Where's my Sam Baby Devil Murph? <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Oh, well. I think I, I think I screwed it up by making it too big. Anyway, if you want to see it, um, just email me. And I'll... Uh, cut and paste it and put it into the email it'll look a little a little better that way in fact maybe i'll do that let's see uh so no more questions i'm just gonna do what i was thinking here all right so here we go so i'm gonna do this put it into an email that way you guys can see it a little bit smoother than it looks um than it looked on uh on the page there okay so here we go so let me uh show this to you 
and then I'm going to send you a link to uh, what we do for the drown proofing drills. You guys will like this one too. So this is the drown proofing drills we do often as a cool down or after our mobility day, that link right there. Uh, but let me share. Let me share the screen with you here. AOL. Boom. Here we go. So here's my AOL page. Let me make this a little bigger. Oh, man. I got the wrong way. That's <laughs> no, not. That's too big. Yeah, my computer is a little screwy. So anyway, you can see the Sam Baby Murph here. It's four rounds. Um, push press, Sam Baby lunges, Sam Baby sit ups, Sam Baby uh, squats, pull ups, push ups, bear crawls, fireman carry, fireman walks, run a eight hundred. So, just looked a little wonky in the uh, comment section because it didn't come out in a column. It came out. Like it was a, um, what you call it, just a big paragraph, which can get confusing. But you can also Google Sam Baby Devil Murph. I think I've written an article about it somewhere. Ups up on, yeah. So I posted it a few different places, um, and it's different versions of it. You can do it uh, multiple different ways. This is one way that I posted on military.com. Uh, similar to what we just did, but just a different choreography of the way it's set up. More like a Murph version, where you do 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, things like that. All right. Do I have any more questions? Doesn't look like it. Let's see here. All right. So let me uh, share this last swim video with you. This one's not bad. So let's see here. All right. So we're up. Good kick off the wall, double arm pull, transitions, no loss of momentum, coming well past that line there for the uh, first breath. So this is three strokes, four strokes, five strokes, and done in, damn, 20 seconds. This is good. So, yeah, I think he hit like a 730 pace here on this. The one thing that he's doing, he said he's – uh. He said he wanted to make it fast. He says he normally hits like a 50. You see these extra flutter kicks here? They're making them faster, but they're also going to tire him out in a 500. And those are unsustainable for most non-swimming athletes. So my advice is, yes, that's a good 50, but holding that for uh, nine more laps is going to be very challenging to do, mainly because... You know, most people aren't in that kind of swimming shape if they're a non-swimming athlete. You coming from a swimming athlete and that's all you do is like flutter kick for half your practice, probably be able to crush that. But it is a certain level of conditioning that is that enables you to maintain that, that most non-swimmers do not have. Okay, so... Let's see. We got any army guys out there? Anybody going in the army? Give me a give me a big hua if you're going army. Or thumbs up. It's fine too. Comment section. Yeah, I don't see any comments. See, if you're listening and you're going Army, let me know. Doing something different this week. If you're going 
Air Force, let me know. Special Warfare. Bubba Joe, you go in Army? Cool. Now, question for you. Do you have this program? Army PFT. Now, by the way, this is PFT and CFT. I need to change the, title, the uh, cover, but this has been updated for the CFT, OPAT, all of that. And it's got rucking in it as well. Do you have this one? Ship first week of April. Aviation mechanic going Army. Sure do. Okay. Never mind. You're, it's kind of a, just a, one of those questions I was going to give it to a guy who doesn't have it. Um, but also the fact that you're leaving in two weeks. Probably wouldn't even get to you before you left, probably. Um, hopefully it would. Especially if I'm paying eight dollars to ship it priority um so anyway was gonna offer it if anybody's going army get a free book so let's see just curious uh how often do you have to worry about sharks while it buds um or just normal service I could see that being a real concern in some places. Again, just curious. You know, I never really worried about them. Um, you know, because one, we weren't just swimming by ourselves. You had another buddy next to you. So it looks like a group of people. And then if you had like 40 people in the water all at once, there's no shark coming near you. Um some may be curious and see you, but, you know, I, I think I probably only saw one out of hundreds of dives and swims that I've done. And it wasn't scary. Probably the biggest thing that scared me was a tarpon that swam really close to us. And the thing was big as hell. It was bigger than we were. And we were doing a dive at the end of a pier waiting for a mini sub to come pick us up. Me and my buddy's just waiting here uh, after doing what we were supposed to be doing. And, uh, and it's kind of, it's crystal clear water down there in Key West. We we're just training. And, you know, so the pier light goes probably about five, six feet down. And we were probably about 10 feet underwater, maybe 15. Anyway, you could see shadows of things that were above you. Anyway, is it, it was one of those things where uh, I was looking up and it was, you know, you could see the bright lights. I could see my buddy next to me. And then all of a sudden I couldn't see anything because he just eclipsed the light that was coming down. And we just saw this gigantic fish. Now, luckily, on the back end of that fish, I noticed these scales. So I was like, okay, it's not a shark, so, but it was still a big old fish. So, yeah, that's probably about the time I was startled, but never really uh, concerned myself with sharks. I tell you what, I probably hurt me the most were jellyfish over anything. I, I watched out for jellyfish more than sharks. Even if I didn't have a single piece of my body exposed my lips from where the regulator you know my regulators in my mouth my lips were exposed and never failed five or six jellyfish stings on my lips before i was done with a dive and that just sucked Oof. makes me think about it rough roughly just started uh the sto training using your program great program i think you'll like this one it's got some good ones. Definitely in the water. It's going to keep you in the water every day working those pool skills. So anyway, hey, good luck. Hey, did you get a bonus? Just curious. Glad you like like the program. Um, just wondering if you got an Army bonus. Because they're handing them out. One of our guys just left for the Army got 50K. Let's see. So I don't have any any questions here. 
got another five or ten minutes. If you want to ask questions, send them. Otherwise, I'm going to cut it short. Nothing. I've, I don't have any more videos to share with you. Come on, got to be one more question. I'm standing around for one more question or an answer from Bubba Joe. Or anybody wants to go Army. You tell me you want to go Army, I'll send you a book. Just going to take my vitamins while I wait. Nothing. All right. Well, I'm going to close this up a little bit. Uh, if you guys, uh, if I missed anything, send it to me, Stuart Stu Smith. Um, there's a live 20, save 20% on books and ebooks over at stusmithfitness.com store i'll make sure that's working today i think it, it expired uh last week but i'll make sure it's up i know live 15 is up if live 20 is not but don't forget if you're looking for a lot of css critiques all on one page you can go to the tiktok at Stu smith 50 and if you don't want to download the app that's cool you don't have to all you got to do is go to this website TikTok.com at Stu Smith 50 on your computer. You can be on your phone without even downloading the app. It's just a website. So you can still have access to those. I think you can't comment or something if you don't have the app, but big deal. You can at least see countless ways to swim. Uh, you can also get them if you're more on Instagram guy. Stu Smith 50 is also my e Instagram address where you can find uh, a lot of those in reels in fact i was making reels of those videos long before i was making tiktoks so you'll probably find even more on instagram um let's see oh looks like we got a couple questions i will end with these two so um stand by if we're not at your 50 50 workout level for the swim what could we do to work up to it my suggestions would be go with the 25 25 option that is how I start people off here locally whenever they can't do 50-50s very well. We'll just do 25-25. So that's 25 free followed by 25 CSS, rest as needed, 25-25, build up to 50-50s. Um, and then when 50-50s get easy, make it 75-75s or 100-100s. Eventually, the 50-50s will get easy. I know there are some drown-proof exercises in your book. But as someone who works out by himself, how would you do that safely? Oh, they're safe. I just wouldn't tie yourself. You know, drown proofing is not dangerous. You're just bobbing up and down and you're floating, doing a front flip, back flip, traveling. You're simulating your hands and your feet tied. Hands tied behind your back and your feet together. That is a simulation. It is not actually tying yourself up. So I wouldn't sweat it about being dangerous underwater swims don't do too many um but i i definitely wouldn't uh i wouldn't do underwater swims by myself just it's just too dangerous people die every year practicing underwater swims my suggestion would be to kick off the wall practice your double arm pulls couple times come up for a breath go back under practice a double arm pull because what's going to get you across the pool in underwater swimming is a really powerful double arm pull and a glide and then a really good kick and recovery with a streamlined body position that's going to get you across the pool more than a whole bunch of kicks and pulls which just basically just gets you tired so my suggestion would be if you're going to do a 25 yard underwater, see if you can do it in four to five strokes off the wall. So 
I've seen guys do it in three strokes. So it's a lot of gliding. But when you get to the other end, you're hardly winded because you're just, you're not working that hard. And you're getting across the pool, you know, compared to the guy doing this, right? Just constantly pulling and kicking. He's going to be tired. So practice that way. Practice technique versus um, speed and getting yourself over there just by pure stroking. It's all gliding. The more you can do underwater gliding, the easier it's going to be for you. Good questions. All right, folks, don't forget stewsmithfitness.com. Check it out. Lots more articles on there. Um, I posted a couple of military.com articles. Got a ton of articles over there as well. Um, but Google it. Google a question. Put my name in it. I probably answered it online. And then you can also go to the, the websites and search within the websites if you have questions that specific for me. And if I haven't answered it, send me an email. Happy to answer it more specifically towards your situation and your abilities and goals. All right, folks, you guys have a good one. We'll catch you next week.